Hello, this is Matthew Boyd from Staccata in Launceston. I've been working on a video of the principles of swordsmanship, according to Zach Wilde, and I wanted to talk about how Wilde recommends holding the sword. I thought it's deserving of its own video. So Wilde says your hand fast gripped around the handle and then to place your thumb forward upon it. This sounds and looks reasonable for a small sword grip and it's very functional and usable. What is interesting is that Wilde doesn't describe any other method of holding the sword. So I wondered about how he recommends holding the broadsword and when we have our normal small sword grip um, this isn't suitable for large cutting motions with a broadsword. It can be done but more of a, a handshake grip or which is what my point of this video is that I believe that Wilde's recommending the same grip for both small sword and broadsword your hand around the handle and your thumb forward on it very similar to a sabre grip and I'll let you know why I think that so here I am doing Wilde's raising the guards or throwing the guards drill with a broadsword it's a full basket and I can do the drill no problems it's quite comfortable inside this basket I've got a thumb ring and the drill works fine and I'm able to go through all the motions without any difficulty now I'm going through the guards first with an upright body and then with a hollow body as Wilde recommends again no troubles with a normal handshake grip that I'd use that I've been using with broadsword forever. Now if I tried to hold the sword with the saber grip inside a full basket with the sidebars it just can't be done it's uncomfortable the side ring sidebars cut into your hand it's awkward and no fun at all now i can use the same grip at small sword i've got the normal small sword grip or the saber style grip i can use it both with the small sword and with a cutting sword as well, broadsword or a spadroon type sword. So here I am doing Wilde's throwing or raising the guard drill with the sabre style grip. And I've found since doing Wilde with this grip, things have really come alive. Wilde's instructions to cut from the wrist or to throw your cuts in with the speed of the hand with all celerity start to make a lot more sense when you can whip them in with your wrist using this sabre type grip. Also the point forward really extended guard positions of Wilde's broadsword become apparent. Using this hand position I can easily maintain my medium guard and my cart and terse crosswise parries quite easily. Perfectly comfortable and very appropriate to Wilde's medium guard based crosswise parries. Now moving between the inside and outside guard as Wilde describes coming through a point raised medium guard between inside and outside. Also very comfortable and doable and also fast and point forward as Wilde would have us do them. Now Wilde's writing in 1711, though he was a professor of defence since the 1680s or earlier, and you might think, well, this type of grip is a bit early. Do we have any other examples of this type of grip being held with broadsword in the British tradition? And yes, we do. Silver writes about it. In point 28 of his sword and dagger section, Silver writes, Remember in putting forth your sword point to make your space narrow when he lies upon his staccata or any thrust, you must hold the handle thereof as it were along your hand 
resting the pommel thereof in the hollow part of the middle of the heel of your hand towards the wrist, and the former part of the handle must be held between the forefinger and the thumb, without the middle joint of the forefinger towards the top thereof, holding that finger somewhat straight out, gripping around your handle with your other three fingers, and laying your thumb straight towards his, the better to be able to perform this action perfectly. For if you grip your handle close out thwart in your hand, then you cannot lay your point straight upon his to make your space narrow, but that your point will still lie too wide to do the same in due time. And this is the best way to hold your sword in all kinds of variable fight. But upon your guardant or open fight, then hold it with full gripping in your hand and not laying your thumb upon the handle, as some use, then you shall never be able to strongly ward a strong blow. So what's Silver saying? He's saying if your opponent is holding their point forward and threatening to thrust at you, you need to hold this sabre type grip to make narrow space against them and break their thrust before they can put it in. Now, my main point in including Silver's recommendation here is that it is an accepted way of gripping the sword going back to 1605 at least. And Silver says that it's happening common enough that he warns against it in open or guarded fight. So if we're to use a sabre style grip, but a full basket hilt with bars that go down to the pommel makes this type of grip awkward, what type of sword should we be using? It should be a back sword or broadsword with some level of protection for the hand, but not with sidebars. So what examples do we have from the mid 1600s to the early 1700s that could fit this description? Well, here are just a few examples of appropriate swords. Now, Wild strongly bases his broadsword system on his small sword system, and I think it makes a lot of sense to be using the same grip. I think it's an efficient teaching method. Students will get up to speed quickly and be able to use broadsword in a manner that is based upon his small sword. This type of grip is consistent with all the guards that he describes, both for small sword and broadsword. But if you choose not to do this grip, I don't think it's a deal breaker. I think you can still study wild using a different preferred grip and I have done that for years until I started this method. If you're interested in studying wild, let me encourage you to get an appropriate sword and use this grip and build up from there. I think it's great, I think it's a lot of fun and it really brings wild alive. Thank you for your time.